Congratulations. Thank you. And we will go ahead and wrap up today's media availabilities with our race winner, Ryan Truex. Congratulations, Ryan. We'll go ahead and open it up. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we will get a mic right over to you. We'll start here all the way to your right, Ryan, with Chris. Hey, Ryan, uh, congratulations on the, uh, congrats on the win today. Um, so uh, the first thing that I'm thinking is, um, you know, I know you're, you're looking to see what you're gonna do for the 2025 season. Um, what message do you hope this sends to, you know, potential opportunities? Or I mean, like, are, do you have anything on the books already? Uh, no, no, as of right now, I don't have anything uh, done or signed or I don't really know at all. Um, so yeah, this, this helps for sure. Yeah, you feel like this increases your stock a good bit as a, a free agent for next year? I, yeah, I hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, to win, you know, it wasn't like we lucked into it or, or there was a huge wreck. Like, we, you know, controlled the whole race. Um, and I was able to, you know, lead lanes and make blocks and do all the things you have to do uh, to win these races. So, yeah, I feel like to do this and, and win Dover and, and, you know, two completely different tracks, completely different styles. Um, yeah, I feel like it, it should raise my stock for sure. All right. Congrats, Ryan. Thank you. We'll go to Bob and then to Zach. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Obviously, the Dover wins are so emotional because so kind of home track somewhat. So what do, what's this win like compared to those? <clears throat> um, I mean, I don't think it's really kind of set in yet. Um, it's pretty crazy to, to do burnouts in front of that many people on a front straightaway and get out and they're all cheering for you. So that was that was pretty neat. Um, yeah, I feel like I've I've always been good at restrictor plate or taper space or whatever one you call it. Um, super speedway racing, um, you know, from when I first did it way back when I was 18, um, I felt like I understood it and could do it well. And and just I would always make the mistake. Like I feel like I didn't make, I didn't make a lot of mistakes, but when I did it, it was with two to go. And then you know you're you're pretty much out of luck at that point. Um, I did that here in in February in the 19 car. Uh, I think we were third with two to go and ended up wrecked in 15th because I, I had a run and didn't take it. So, you know, this time I, I tried to take every run I got. I kind of tried to do what, what Austin Hill does. You know, he just, if he's got momentum, he takes it and he makes the pass. And that's, that's what I try to do. And, um, our car was, was really, really good, which, which helped a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, it's Daytona. It's the world center of racing. It's really special. I'm sure it'll soak in. Um, all my friends are here, which is really cool. Dover, really, I didn't have any friends and family there. Um, my dad and my, my brother, obviously, were there, but a lot of people from home weren't there. So I actually have a bunch of friends, and, and both my parents are here um, this weekend. So to have them all there was, was really special for sure. We'll go to Zach and then to Tanner. <clears throat> Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. Congratulations on this. That last lap, going through turns one and two, or at least coming out of the tri-oval, um, the 48 and 16 would look like they were trying to build a run before the 16 went around. Obviously, there, there's a lot of what-ifs, right? But did you feel like you were in control at that point to, and in a good enough position to defend whatever moves might have been coming your way on that final lap? I don't know. Um, I probably would have wrecked trying to find out. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I knew that whole – that whole last lap, once I got in front of AJ and, and got to the top, you know, I was I was lifting and dragging brakes, and he was still backing away from me. So I knew he was he was trying to back up to the 48 to generate a run. Um, and I saw it coming out of the trioval and and started to move down. Um, and you know, I I kind of saw him. I saw his headlight start pointing even further left, and that's when I knew they're probably running into each other and I didn't want him to do one of these numbers and come back up and, and get my left rear. Um, I think that happened to a few guys at Talladega guys that weren't even really involved in the wreck to start. They just keep kept wrecking and ended up taking out more guys. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I would have, I would have for sure been aggressive and, and tried to block it. Um, it's just so hard, you know, I don't have, Toyota, we don't have a lot of, of teammates out there. You know, there's there's five of us, and you look at the other manufacturers, um, one manufacturer, there's a lot more, and they all work together. And when it comes down to the end and you're the you're the lone guy out there, they, they don't want to work with you, they don't want to push you. So 
I knew that that was coming and uh, yeah, it, it, it ended up working out, but um, to answer your question, I don't know, but, but I would have definitely found out and uh, yeah, it might have ended bad. I believe we have a quick question up in the press box. Press box, you can go ahead. All right, we'll go to Tanner while we wait on the press box. You know, you, you spoke a little bit about the differential uh, between the manufacturers out there. How in the middle of a race are you trying to communicate uh, with maybe some of those different manufacturers and saying, hey, I'll work with you, let's stay up front? Yeah, I mean, you've got – when you're out there, you kind of learn who's who's got a good car, who doesn't, who's got a good handle on their car, who doesn't, um, who you trust to push, who you trust to push you. Uh, you. You learn that all as you go. And honestly, the teammate stuff, and it, it all flies out the window with, with two to go um, for the most part. But, you know, when you have that choice as a, as a guy, you know, with a teammate or a manufacturer tie, you're going to pick, you know, mo more times than not, you're going to pick uh, the guy on your side if, if it helps you. Um, but, you know, it's just I feel like we always are, are struggling at, at having a lot of just cards stacked against us um, at the Super Speedway races. So. I knew, you know, when you know that coming in, you kind of prepare for it. And I knew I'd have to be extra ag aggressive blocking. And really, I had to be super aggressive on not getting too far away because every time I was leading, whoever was behind me was was backing up as hard as they could. Um, and that's where my spotter, Tyler Green, came in. And, you know, he, he really kept me disciplined on not getting too far away. Uh, there was once or twice I did, and I lost the lead. So I learned that pretty quick. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in the middle of the race, it's – it just kind of comes down to who, who your car works well with, who's, who you know, who you trust. Parker Kligerman's a good buddy of mine. I trust him. Trust him to push me. I'll push him. Um, we've kind of had an unwritten kind of uh, you know deal since we started racing against each other in like 2012 that we worked together at these races um, until the last lap. So he was, he was in the mix there, um, but there was a car between us, so didn't really matter. Um, but yes, it, it just comes down to, to who you're comfortable with. We'll come down here to John. John Newby Alt Driver. So you talked about how, you know, you, you kind of have this aptitude for super speedway racing, but does it increase the level of difficulty when, you know, you're making some of these sporadic starts? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, obviously I've, I've run, I think all of the super speedway races this year. So Experience wise versus the field, we've all done the same amount of, of laps at the same tracks that are like this. Um, the difference is I'm not out there every week. Uh, you know, these guys, when you're racing full time and, and people make sporadic starts, you don't really think about them and you don't, you know, you're not around them every week. So maybe they don't want to push you or they don't want you to push them. Um, you know, luckily I've been around long enough and, and know enough people that I'm able to, to, you know, get around that a little bit. Um, but then on the car side and the driver's side, you know, not being in the car every week, it's just the little things that are so hard to, to just hit right away. Um, you know, I missed a shift on one restart when I was leading and, and gave up the lead. Uh, I missed my pit box the first stop because, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't the color that I thought it was last time I raced. So I was looking for a different color. Like it's, it's little things like that, that when you're racing every week, you don't even think about it. Just it's automatic. Um, so for me, it's especially with no practice to show up qualifying race. Um, yeah, it's it's really just about I guess doing your homework and prepping as much as you can. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely tough, and, and it, to have a good group around you is is huge. And and Tyler and that whole team, you know, they're proven winners. They compete for a championship every time, every every year with that car, no matter who's in it. So, I mean, everybody that's driven it this year has won in it. Um, so. It's just a privilege to drive a car that good and, and you know, to be able to, to dominate the race. I don't know if dominate, but lead a lot of laps and be up front all night, aside from when I miss my pit box. Um, yeah, it feels really cool. Thank you. All right, let's try the press box again. Press box, can you hear me? <laughs> all right, are there any other questions down here in the media center? All right, we'll go to Matt. Matt Weaver, Sports Not. You always seem so even-keeled and just level, whether it's the good times, the bad, 
winning right now, you're kind of just your level. When things go bad, you're kind of level. <laughs> so I'm curious, like when, when you leave the racetrack, good day, bad day, do you let some of that out or is this just who yeah, you are? No, yeah, I do a little bit. I'll, uh, you know, we'll have a pretty good time tonight. I think, uh, I'm staying down here for the cup race tomorrow. So I don't have to get on a plane and fly home and all my friends are here. So we can just go over to the beach and have a good time. Um, yeah, I, I used to be a lot worse. I feel like when I was younger and I feel like I've gotten better as I've gotten older and, and gotten more realistic with where I'm at and you know, what, what I got around me and, and, you know, it's just life. So yeah, I feel like I am pretty even keeled, but, uh, I don't feel like I used to always be this way. Jeff O'Keefe knows. He keeps looking at me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's just how I am. I just, my my brother's kind of the same way, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't really know why. I, I was definitely pumped up, but I will be when I leave here. Um, but, yeah, I think that having an even keel or whatever, when you're racing part-time like me and, and – you're like, all right, I got a Gibbs ride. I'm going to go out and, and win. And then you go out. Like my first race at Vegas, I wrecked, like right off the bat. Not in the race, but just my first race with them. Ran really well. Late restart, wrecked. And like that's like a crushing defeat when you're a guy that's been part-time forever. That's your first time in a car good enough to win, um, you know, after bouncing around a bunch of different teams, doing all these different things. Um, it's really easy to let that get to you and, and kill your confidence. And it, it definitely hurt it. Um, but I feel like that's where I've really, really improved as, you know, a driver and a person is, is learning how to, I guess, filter through that stuff and deal with it. And, um, yeah, I feel like it's, it's made me better all around. And that's actually a perfect segue to where I wanted to go with this. So like, I know you want to be full-time, you want to race more, you want to be able to do more. Every racer wants more success, but if this is your your lot in life, your career, and, and you're able to do the sim work, you're able to race sporadically, maybe add more races. Is this good? Is this okay? Yeah, I mean, it's not what I drew up. Um, it's not what I think I deserve. But yeah, it's, it's better than, I mean, it's hard to complain racing cars for a living and, you know, driving virtual cars for a living. Like, it's a pretty cool job, pretty cool uh, set up and I got a lot of off weekends, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, I know the hard part is I know in the back of my mind, if I was in one of these cars full time, I could win a championship. Um, I think there's no doubt about that. Uh, it's just putting all the things and pieces and parts together to make that happen. Um, haven't quite figured that part out yet, but, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely enjoy what I do and I enjoy being, you know, somebody that, that can help move the needle and helps, benefit the program, benefit the team, you know, feel like I'm appreciated and wanted and, and, you know, not just, not just there for a paycheck or, you know, anything like that. I enjoy what I do. So yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I would be happy with it, but definitely not how I envisioned it. Steph in the middle has the question from the press box. So Steph, go ahead. Uh, the question's from Owen Johnson from cupscene.com. With your brother retiring from full-time competition, do you feel any more pressure or motivation to represent the Truex family in the Cup Series? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say probably the pressure is myself. I don't really feel outside pressure. Um, definitely motivation. Um, you know, it's going to be a whole, for my family, going to be a whole different world once he's, you know, retired because um, that's all we've known for half of my life. Um, since I was 12 years old, he's been in the Cup Series, I think. Uh, maybe 13, right around there. Uh, he's been at the NASCAR national level, you know, since 2003 when I was 11. So, you know, two thirds of my life basically. Um, so yeah, I feel like, I mean, when I see family members, they're like, you got to figure this out because we need somebody to root for on Sundays. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's more myself than, than outside forces. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can do it. Hopefully I can figure out how to, you know, make this deal work and, get to the cup series and, and hopefully, uh, carry the name, you know, proudly. Go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC sports. Um, Ryan, what do you enjoy about the sim work? Because here that can be monotonous or, you know, just something time after time. And that's, you know, that's not what you, like you say, plan to do. 
So what is it you enjoy or how do you feel like you're making an impact? Um, I, I just like, I like driving stuff. I like making laps. I like bettering myself, figuring out how to go faster, figuring out how to make the cars better. Um, you know, that's all stuff I enjoy. I mean, if I wasn't doing that, I'd be at home playing iRacing, doing the same thing. Um, so, you know, yeah, it, I enjoy all that. And, and I think it's made me a lot better as a driver. I think it's helped me a huge amount with racing part-time. Um, just being able to look at, I mean, you can do it already, but to, to look at all these different drivers data, um, to actually talk to the cup drivers at JGR and learn why they do what, why they do what they do or when they're doing it, what they're doing it for. Um, you know, that all really helps me and, and I get to, you know, drive all their setups and do, do all the stuff they do. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of getting behind the scenes knowledge as a driver and it's, you know, it's helped me a lot on just being fast, like just going out off the truck and practice, even though I've been out of the car for two months, I can go out and, you know, find the limit of the tire lap two, where if I didn't do it, it might be lap 10 or it might be never. Um, so it just, it just helps me stay sharp and yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy helping, you know, hopefully helping make the team better and, and improving, you know, processes and how we do things and car setups and all that stuff. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, Ryan, congratulations. Cool. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I was planning on winning, so I told him how to come. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. I think I'm going to have to now.